I'm Forrest Meggers. This is my family and my dog Stitches. And we're very proud to have weathered quite the renovation on our home, focusing on energy efficiency and the environment. For starters, you can see here I have a blue post in my yard that actually goes 500 feet into the ground. And me, being an energy engineer at Princeton University, I'm very interested in energy efficient heating and cooling. So one of the main things I wanted to do on my house was put in a geothermal or ground source heat pump system. And so that's what you see here. This is where I'm gonna get all the heat to heat my house in the winter and all the cooling to cool it in the summer. Besides that, there's a lot of different environmental features and energy efficient features we've put on the house. Um, and I'd like to show them to you. So we have our cedar shake shingles here because I prefer using carbon storing wood rather than carbon emitting asphalt shingles. And then I'll show you in here how we decided to insulate the building. So here you can see where the new entrance is. This is in fact the only place on the building where we increased the footprint of the building. One of my goals was not to increase the size of our house too much. We just made the top of the roof a little taller. And then when we built the new walls upstairs, as well as this little section down here for our new front door, we really wanted to make sure that we had a good amount of insulation in the wall. And one of the strategies we use that most people don't realize is an option is putting insulation on the outside of your stud wall. So a lot of people put two by six stud walls to get more insulation, but then those two by sixes still conduct heat through that wood. So in this case, my sheathing, which is a zip sheathing that you see probably around town and houses getting built, this sheathing is called a R sheathing or a, a insulated sheathing. And so it has foam attached to the back of it and that prevents heat from leaking through any of these studs now. So I have two by four studs and then I have this foam insulation that prevents heat from being lost. And then here in the first part of the house, I'm doing one kind of special thing with the insulation, which is to use a natural material. In this case, it just so happens that I grew up on a farm in Iowa and we have sheep. And so this is sheep wool from my farm. And we're gonna put this as the loose fill insulation down here in the entrance of the house. And we're gonna kind of highlight that part, which will be fun. In my house, one of the most important parts to me was to put in radiant heating and cooling. So that is putting the heating and cooling into the floor of the building. And so for the new construction upstairs, we put in this subfloor, which is just plywood that has grooves in it that lets me run this piping around to distribute heating and cooling all throughout the floor of the building. You can see each room then has its own separate zone of heating and cooling. So the bedroom pipes go in and come out here go in, come out there, and we're just getting ready to put the pipe in to the floor of the main room here. And you can see this all has a conductive material that spreads the heat out. So this is a much more efficient and much more comfortable, especially for your dogs, way to distribute heating and cooling in a building. Most people are aware of it with a heating case, but it's also possible to do cooling, which is what we're going to be demonstrating in my house. And the fun thing about this wood floor is that I really wanted to get ash flooring and I wanted to get ash that was harvested from fallen trees that were killed from the invasive species, the emerald ash borer, which is ravaging our stock of ash trees in the US. And so all these little black marks are sort of a reminder of one of the big challenges we have in our ecosystem with invasive species. So in the bedrooms, as I said, we have the ash floor. And if you look out the window, we actually just had to cut down our own ash tree that supports my wonderful tree house that I've been working on for the past almost 10 years. And here you can see another really important feature of the design of the house, which is as you looked out the windows, I built the overhangs over these windows, which are facing south to provide the ideal, what's called passive solar shading because the sun is in the south, right? Because it's down toward the equator and in the winter, the sun is much lower and so it comes in under the overhang and streams in and heats the room. And then in the winter, when this, in the summer, when the sun gets high, it completely is shaded from the window. So none of that heat comes in. It's the equivalent of an entire window air conditioner worth of heat that I get to trade just by having a properly designed geometry of my overhang, which is something you can just go online and look up passive solar shading overhang and it'll tell you how far out you should have a shade over your windows on the south side of your house. So this is super effective on the south and if you look at my energy efficiency label, I have you know stand pretty decent double glazing, right? But I don't have the low E coating. So instead of having the low E energy efficient window, which is unfortunately just sold 
ubiquitously, when I have really good passive solar shading, I actually want all that heat to come through the window. So I selected windows that actually have a higher solar heat gain coefficient. So more solar heat comes in in the winter because that's what I want. And then lastly, another easy thing to do, which you can look up online, is what is the direction of the prevailing wind at your house? And so I made all the windows open this way so that the prevailing wind will come in and get caught by the casement windows as they open. And that way in the summer I can maximize my natural ventilation in the house. Welcome to the basement. This is where all the magic happens. This is where I get to bring in the geothermal water from outside. And it comes into this gigantic, no, it's not gigantic actually, it's this teeny tiny little box down here, which does all the heating and cooling for my house. So it can take heat out of the ground and raise the temperature up by doing the heat pump cycle. It's just like a refrigerator. Makes the water a little bit warmer and sends it around the house. And it can also take water in, make it a little bit colder if I need it to be a little bit colder. And then I send it around the house in those pipes that you saw that go underneath the floor. Now one of the more novel things that I'm going to be trying to do in my house is, is use some thermal storage. So I have these water bags that I'm going to be insulating. I'm going to be getting one that's going to be about five times bigger than this. And I'm going to store it in a crawl space I have over here. And that will allow me to use my heat pump during the day when the sun is out hitting my solar panels and hitting everyone's solar panels take that electricity and make all the heating that I need for the night and store it in the bag. And so that way I am able to decouple myself from what's called the, the problem of solar, the problem of the sun only shining during the day. So it's what we call it uh, energy dispatch problem. When do I have energy that I can dispatch for use? Well, I have the sun during the day and then I have a thermal storage bag that I can use to store both heating and cooling whenever I need it. The heat pump that I have from a company called Water Furnace, they also sell storage tanks that they can put with the heat pump system. So mine is novel in part because I needed to put it in my crawl space, but they sell tanks that look just like your water heater that can do all that storage for you and allow you to not run your heat pump at night and save your solar energy more um, for use during the day without needing as many batteries. And that might be a little bit more novel or unique thing I'm working on, but it's important as we think about how we try and expand solar power out across our community. At some point, if we all have solar panels only, we need to figure out a way to have energy at night as well. Something that's a little bit easier to do is to think about how you might also be able to do a heat pump for your water heater. So my water heater uh, bit the dust about three years ago before we started this project. So I purchased a new heat pump pipe water heater. And so this is the most efficient type of water heater you can get. It does so with about half the energy that it would otherwise take a standard electric water heater to heat up because in that case, all the electricity just goes into the tank. And with a heat pump, it uses a clever cycle to suck some heat out of the air. So in that case, with just one unit of energy going into the heat pump, I can get like two or three units of heat down here into the tank by pulling it out of the air in the basement. So one of the big objectives also in retrofitting my house from an energy perspective is getting rid of all our gas. So this is where the gigantic furnace used to sit. Think home alone in that crazy basement thing. It was spread out and took tons of space. So again, using all the water piping, now the whole thing is very, very compact. So as you saw inside, we try and use as much radiant heating and cooling as possible to keep us comfortable. But outside, we need to take advantage of all this solar radiation. So the flat part of my roof that faces south is the ideal location for my solar photovoltaics that will be installed. These are my old DIY installation that I use to power things in the garage. But also you can see that probably even more energy savings comes from effectively shading my windows with that passive solar overhang that allows the shallow sun in the winter in the south to come in and heat the upstairs. And then as you can see, shade the entire facade in the summer and keep all that extra heat from getting in. And if you look over here, you can kind of see what happens to the remnants of ash trees that get emerald ash borer infestations, the invasive species that produced in part a lot of the wood that you saw inside. So we do our best to take what remains of our ash species and store that carbon up in our wood floors, which then become the place where we remember the trees, hopefully a little bit, and deploy all that amazing radiant technology that I'm so excited about. So with that, Thanks for coming to see my radically radiant house and keep trying to be as efficient as you can.